Hey, this is Jeremy from Northern Kentucky, and you are watching Trucker Josh and Diesel on TJV. Good morning from St. Paul, Alberta. Just delivered our first crate or first box, or whatever you want to call it. And we're on our way to Edmonton to drop off another one. Most everything is shut down. It's crazy. This place is usually just packed. There's still people out and about. Like, it's not a complete ghost town. But it's, you can definitely tell something's going on. But everybody has been really good at being obedient and practicing social distancing. It's been really good to see. Can I park here? There's a 7-Eleven. I want to go and uh, I want to grab a coffee here. Just a sec. No, that's a driveway. I think I can park here behind this black pickup, right? No, nope, that's a driveway too. Or is it? No, nope, I can park here. <laughs> I'm going to park here. There we go. I'm gonna go grab a coffee real quick. So I've got my coffee. The world is not ending. You guys are worried about all this stuff going around right now. And as long as I have my coffee, you got nothing to worry about. So actually, I am still very impressed, like I was saying in the last clip, that everybody is being very diligent and obedient in keeping everything very clean, very sanitary, and uh, not getting close to people. I got, uh, or when I got my coffee in 7-Eleven there, I walked in, and like every other building I've walked into this week, smelt squeaky clean like bleach and sanitizer. So they had been cleaning non-stop. Everything was, I've never seen a 7-Eleven clean, never mind this clean. The lineup was, it was pretty long, but there was only four people in the store, but everybody was staying like six, 10 feet away from each other in the line. Nobody was, uh, even this young kid came in, this young teenager, and even he was keeping his distance from everybody, not touching everything. I just remember when I was a teenager, man, I would've been like, oh, whatever, it's no big deal. No, everyone's taking it serious, that's good. The less people we infect, the better off we'll be. Or that we get infected, huh? Weird times, I tell you what, weird times. But hey, let's hope it uh, let's hope we contain it and it doesn't get bad that bad. Right? Let's really hope that we can do our best here. So my truck is nice and squeaky clean disinfected it again today. I'll do it again probably later this afternoon because that's when I've been getting in and out of my truck more and then before I go to bed. I know maybe a little too much but hey it's like it's like strapping a load. It's better to have too many straps than too few. It's better than disinfect too much than too little. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. felt kind of sorry for in 7-Eleven there. He was an elderly man. I don't know what he was doing outside his house, but he, he went there just to buy the newspaper. And he's waiting in line, and he's wearing a mask. And I felt so bad. And you know what? If, if you would have just asked, you could have stayed in your car. Because I saw him in his car, right, as I, as I was walking up. He could have just asked me to go in there and grab him a newspaper. I would have paid for it and got it for him and brought it to his car. You know? But he didn't have to go in there. At the same time, I'm sure these guys, they... You know, they, they want to get out a little bit. They're probably getting a little stir-crazy inside their houses, but that's kind of risky, man. There's a guy behind me that really wants to go faster than me, and I really want to save fuel more than he does. As soon as this van passes, he's going to blow my doors off. Watch this. Watch this. You ready? Here he comes. Here he comes. Da -da -da -da. Floor it, buddy. Am I going to get the bird? Nice guy. Just wanted to go faster. A 
arrived in Edmonton, Alberta, and already the, uh, what do you call those DOT signs, or the, the signs on the side of the road that they can change from wherever their head headquarters are. Can't think of the name right now. You know what I mean. Like those signs on the side of the road uh, are saying that all public rec centers are closed in the city. I believe restaurants here are have been asked to close as well, and bars. I don't know if they've been forced to at this point, but still a lot of people out, as you can see. A lot of people out and about. But we're just sort of passing through on Yellowhead Highway. I gotta get to the northwest corner on the other side, drop off one of these crates, and then head over to Barhead. And then we can start making our way into British Columbia. We got a long drive. After we're done delivering in Barhead, we have 520 miles to my next delivery, which I want to do tomorrow morning. That's about 800 kilometers. A long day ahead of us yet. But for the most part, this load has been keeping me away from large urban centers like this. This is my only delivery in a big city on this load, and I had 13 drops, I believe, on this load. So it's kept me busy through this first week of the pandemic when everything's sort of beginning to shut down. I have a load lined up to take me back home next week. And uh, my dad has a load right now that's going into the US. He just told me that he crossed into the US, no problem. And that the border to tourists was shut down and to any non-essential people, like the car side was pretty much shut down, but the trucks were still being let through. Sneak in and out of the city here and uh, get back out to the countryside where the air is a little bit fresher. All right, this is Barhead, Alberta. Bar with two R's. Barhead, all one word. Never been here before. Another new town. I don't think I've been here before. Wait, maybe I have. Is this on the way up to Grand Prairie? I have to check. My, I've probably been here, but I've been everywhere. Nice little town. Looks like it's pretty busy. a and drive drive-through is pretty busy. I guess, yeah, they got their restaurant closed down there as well at a and It's good to see that the whole country, coast to coast, is coming together to limit the spread. That's awesome. Even in these small little towns way out here in the middle of nowhere, they're doing their part. The grocery store is just packed full, of course. I hope they're keeping all their stores and shelves and surfaces really, really clean. There's a lot of people going in there touching stuff. And another thing when you're shopping, try not to pick stuff up off the shelf and then put it back on the shelf if you don't want it. Only touch it and take it if you're actually going to buy it. One kilometer, turn right on, 61 Avenue. Just a thought. I think I'm gonna have to be in that lane. I'm gonna have to be in that lane. Here we go. What a move, I know, right? Smooth transition to the right lane. So I got one crate to deliver here, and then this is my last delivery of the day. This is number three of today. And from here, we've got 800 kilometers or 500 and some miles to Quinsel, BC, into the mountains. We might see a little bit of scenery today yet, but uh, it might be dark by the time we get to the Rockies. We'll definitely have some scenery to show you tomorrow, though. I'm actually really enjoying this multi-drop load. It's kept me busy all week. It's a decent paying load. Uh, it's very light freight, so I'm practically pulling what my truck would think is an empty flatbed behind me. It's light. I have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven crates left on my trailer. And in total, it weighs maybe like 4,000 pounds. Maybe a little more than that, but... I can't even feel it behind me. It's been great. So uh, it's been a good week. We're done now here in Barhead, Alberta. We're done our Alberta drops. Now we go into British Columbia, 858 kilometers from here. So uh, 520 miles. My GPS says if I don't stop and I drive the speed limit all the way there without stopping, we'll be there at 1.33 a.m. And that's in the next time zone over yet. So that's 2.30 a.m. here where I am now so i don't know if we're even going to make it all the way there tonight but i got a hold of him i said i'm coming i'm on the way there i told him where i'm at and uh, how long
long it should take me to get there and when I should get there. And they'll be there all day tomorrow. And he says, well, we show up there at nine so I can deliver whenever I get there tomorrow. So I wanna hopefully get there as early as possible because from there, it's five hours down to Salmon Arm where my next stop is. And then I have two more after that yet in Vernon and Kelowna, which Salmon Arm, Vernon and Kelowna, they're all sort of like really close together within like an hour, hour and a half of each other. So if I could get it all done tomorrow, that'd be great. But I think Vernon and Kelowna, I know Kelowna for sure at least, uh, is open on Saturday, the next day. So I can finish then if I have to. And then my reload is back in Alberta because uh, there's not much, not as much freight moving around right now because of the whole crisis going on. So I gotta go empty all the way to Alberta. Not uh, optimal, not what I would prefer, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Right, Diesel? You know, watching too much TikTok, man. You gotta stop that. You mean, he's, 30, he's almost 32 years old, man. I have a youthful spirit. What, and TikTok's funny. Some of the stuff on there is garbage, obviously. There's a lot of funny stuff on there too. I've been sharing it on my Facebook. Do you follow my Facebook? Facebook.com slash official trucker Josh. That's my Facebook. And I share my favorite ones there. Anyways, let's get back on the road now. We got a long drive ahead of us. We're gonna, how much time do we got left here? Speak to me. You have eight hours and 51 minutes of remaining drive time. 858 kilometers of driving. A lot of that is mountain driving. We're not gonna make it all the way there on our hours today. But we'll make it close. We'll make it close, but about another eight hours ahead of us. Let's do this. We're catching up to a house or something. It's Alberta, so. They don't disassemble things and move them here. They just move the whole thing all at once. That's Alberta. <laughs> so remember what we talked about when I was in BC after we got these repairs done about uh, follow vehicles and pilot vehicles? I'm coming up behind this massive load, right? You got two vehicles following him that are controlling traffic behind him. I'm gonna move out into this left lane. Oh, there's two of these houses. Oh boy. So if they don't want me to pass, these guys are gonna cut in front of me. If they don't cut in front of me, that means it's okay to pass. They're radioing the guys hauling the oversized loads up ahead, letting them know that I'm coming. So I'm gonna get past this guy, no problem. If something comes up, this guy's gonna cut in front of me. He's staying there, so that means it's okay to pass. Now I just use my own discretion here. If I feel comfortable doing it, then we do it. Let's give him a little space here. Now that would be fun. That would be fun. We got one more here. Let's pay attention to these pilot vehicles behind them here. They're gonna let me come past. They're radioing the driver up ahead saying that there's a truck coming past. Trucker Josh, he's coming. Watch out, cause he can't see me. So he knows I'm coming now. Let's sneak on past them. There we go. And since there's no more vehicles behind me that want to pass, he's going to move more to the center and take up the entire road until someone else wants to go past. So that's how you know whether or not you should go around a wide load on the highway. If they, if they don't want you to pass, they'll make it very clear. They won't let you. If they don't get mad at them, that's because uh, there could be a bridge coming up. Like, they'll radio the driver up ahead and say, hey, there's a truck coming past. The driver up ahead sees a narrow bridge coming. I'll be like, wait, wait, hold them back. There's a narrow bridge coming. I'm gonna need the whole road. Then the pilot vehicle says, okay. Or the follow vehicle, I don't know what you, what you wanna call it. He'll cut in front of me and stop me from passing until we're past the bridge, until it's safe. If they wouldn't do that, I try to pass them on the bridge, well, I'm probably gonna die. Especially if I'm in like a small little smart car or something. Got a little go-kart. That's what that's all about. That would be a lot of fun hauling those heavy loads. That's a that's an Alberta thing. You'll see that. If you ever come to Alberta, you're most likely gonna see that. They, you see it pretty often, almost every time I come out here. Well, we lost the four-lane highway, officially on the mountain highway. We're not quite in British Columbia yet. We're still in Alberta. 
coming up to the National Park, I believe this is Jasper National Park, right? Maybe it's called something different. Still got about five and a half hours remaining to drive yet. I'm not sure where we're gonna make it to. I wanna get as far as we can. At least we get to enjoy some of the mountain views today before the sun goes down. The sun is beginning to set further and further towards the north again, which means our daylight hours are getting longer and longer. It's already 7.30 p.m. here. Man, the sun hasn't even gone below the horizon yet. It's still there somewhere. And I think once we get into British Columbia, it goes to Pacific time right away. I don't know if it's right at the border or if it's a little ways in. I don't come down this highway that often. I'm usually on Highway 1 in the south. Now we're up here on the Yellowhead. The other highway, there's only two in southern Canada. Our other highway goes up, uh, it's called the Alaska Highway. It goes up through Yukon into Alaska. I don't travel this road that often, so I'm not too sure. I come through here every now and then. I just, this is a little bit more of a remote road. And the only reason you'd come through here is if you're going to British Columbia from Edmonton. Prince George, British Columbia right now. A northern city in BC. And this place is huge. Look at this, this is like, this looks like Winnipeg almost. I mean, it's not as big as Winnipeg, but we're just rolling through downtown here. This is, I thought Prince George was just a little town. This is, I've been here many times. I've just never gone through downtown before. Wow. Quite a bit of people here. Nobody on the streets, though. So this is where we're gonna spend the night, anyways. Uh, I saw that there's a pilot flying J around here somewhere. To the right on 20th Avenue, Highway 16. So I'm pretty sure there's a truck stop around here somewhere. We'll find somewhere to park nearby here. I got about, I got 26 minutes to find a parking spot. Then I'm out of hours. 